Hello, my name is Travis Monk. This is one part of a series of videos overviewing chemistry and biochemistry as they pertain to important concepts in biology. This video will provide an overview of chemistry, emphasizing atomic structure, the periodic table, and chemical bonds. The picture to the right shows carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms that are covalently bonded to form a sugar. All these terms will be described throughout this video. Atoms are the smallest units of matter, particles that cannot be broken down any further. Atoms are the building blocks of all other substances on Earth, living and non-living. One type of molecule, sugar from the previous slide, is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms and is found in all living things. Graphene, as shown in the picture to the right, is a material that was discovered in 2004. It is supposedly the strongest, lightest, and toughest material on Earth and the topic of a lot of current research. It is synthesized by scientists by linking carbon molecules in a hexagonal pattern. Atoms are made up of three different types of particles found in two different locations. Protons, or positively charged particles, and neutrons, particles with no charge, are located in the nucleus of an atom. The nucleus contains almost all of the mass of an atom. The rest of the atom is just relatively empty space. The second location within the atom is the electron cloud. Very small, negatively charged particles move about spaces in the electron cloud called orbitals. The picture to the right shows one model, a Bohr model, of a carbon atom and how these different particles would be arranged. The protons, shown in blue, and neutrons, shown in orange, are located in the center, or the nucleus of an atom. Green electrons are found on the outside of the nucleus in orbital clouds. The number of protons that an atom possesses determines what type of atom, or element, is being discussed. The periodic table, shown to the right, orders elements according to the number of protons and how the electrons within that atom are arranged. Elements in different groups or a column of the periodic table contain similar properties. The horizontal rows within the periodic table are called periods. When looking at the periodic table, there are three very important pieces of information you need to be able to identify and use. First, each box of the periodic table represents an element. Each element is abbreviated by an element symbol that is one, two, or three letters long. Sometimes the choice of letters may not seem to make a lot of sense. The reason iron is represented by the letters Fe is because the periodic table is universal and typically derived from Latin, and Fe in Latin is ferrum. Second, there should be a whole number or a number without decimals in this box. What this represents is the atomic number of the atom, that is, the number of protons that an atom contains, and that's what defines the element being discussed. Finally, there should be a number that is larger than the atomic number that contains decimals. This is the atomic mass, or the number of protons plus the average number of neutrons that the element in, in, of interest contains. The picture on this slide illustrates one very important element for all living things, carbon. This square shows the element name, the atomic number and towards the top, the element symbol for carbon, or C, and the atomic mass found at the bottom of the periodic table. This picture exhibits all the components that we just discussed. On the previous slides, I stated that the number of protons defines what element you are discussing and that the atomic mass was the number of protons plus the average number of neutrons that an element possesses. The reason I had to say things in this manner is that the number of neutrons and the number of electrons within an element can vary. Ions are atoms that have an imbalance in the number of protons and the number of electrons that they possess. The picture to the right shows a typical hydrogen atom on the left-hand side. It possesses one proton and one electron. If you remove the negatively charged electron, as shown in the bottom right image, it would have one proton and zero electrons, giving it a positive charge. Because it has a charge, it is called an ion. The term isotope can be used to describe two atoms of the same atomic number that have a different atomic mass. They have the same number of protons, they are the exact same element, but they have a different number of neutrons. A typical hydrogen atom, again shown on the left, has one proton and zero neutrons. The particle on the top right has one proton and one neutron. Since the atomic number is one, it's still hydrogen, but they have a different atomic mass. For this reason, these two hydrogen atoms could be called isotopes of one another. Some atoms, because of the number of protons that they possess, their neutrons, and their electrons, they're chemically stable by themselves. Most atoms, however, are not. 
One key factor in determining how stable an atom is is how the electrons within it are arranged. All atoms strive to have a full outermost layer of electrons, and they will give up electrons, take electrons, or share electrons to become more stable. The model of an atom to the right has 19 protons, 19 electrons, and 20 neutrons. Since this atom has 19 protons, it would be potassium. It only has one electron in the outermost electron level, so it will often give up that electron. P potassium often groups with other elements that need an electron, such as fluorine. This grouping up will be described on the next slide. When two or more atoms join up, they form what are called molecules. Examples of molecules would include both of those molecules shown in the picture to the right, NaCl or table salt, and O2 or oxygen gas, because they both consist of two or more atoms and they're always in fixed proportions. NaCl, for example, is always one part sodium atom and one part chlorine atom. Compounds are molecules that have two or more different types of atoms, or two or more different elements in fixed proportions. All compounds are molecules, but not all molecules are compounds. In the example picture to the right, NaCl would be an example of a compound, since it has two different types of atoms, sodium and chlorine, while oxygen gas found at the bottom would be an example of a molecule, but not of a compound, because while it contains two or more atoms in fixed proportions, they are both the same type of atom, oxygen. Different types of chemical bonding that can occur to form molecules will be described on the next slide. There are two primary ways that atoms can become more stable through chemical bonding. The first way is by sharing electrons. Two non-metals, or elements that are found on the right side of the periodic table, can share electrons when they form covalent bonds. The picture to the right shows two hydrogen atoms with one electron in their outermost level and one oxygen atom with six electrons in its outermost level. When these three nonmetals share electrons, they fill up all of their outermost level of electrons and they form very strong covalent bonds. The resulting product is water. Sometimes instead of sharing electrons, elements will give up or take electrons to become more stable. When electrons are transferred, as shown in the picture to the right, where sodium gives an electron to chlorine to form sodium chloride or table salt, two ions are formed. The positively and negatively charged ions are slightly attracted to each other, forming a weak ionic bond. This type of bond always involves a metal, or element on the left side of the periodic table, and a nonmetal, or element found on the right side of the periodic table. That is the end of this video summarizing some of the themes of chemistry that pertain to what we're going to be learning in biology class this year. If you're interested in learning about any specific chemistry or biochemistry concepts or any other themes of biology, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.